Welcome to our continuing series, Quotations to Inspire and Uplift. Today, Love in Savitri. When we read Savitri and allow these lines about love to enter into our inner being, we draw one step closer to the realization of the supermental world and the transformation promised us by Sri Aurobindo and Mother. But when the phantom flame edge fails undone, then never more can space or time divide the lover from the loved. Space shall draw back her great translucent curtain, time shall be the quivering of the spirit's endless bliss. Creation leaped straight from the hands of God, marvel and rapture wandered in the ways. Only to be was a supreme delight. Life was a happy laughter of the soul, and joy was king with love for minister. The spirit's luminousness was bodied there. Life's contraries were lovers or natural friends, and her extreme keen edges of harmony. An incense floated in the quivering air. A mystic happiness trembled in the breast, as if the invisible beloved had come, assuming the sudden loveliness of a face, and close glad hands could seize his fugitive feet, and the world change with the beauty of a smile. O oh, fragrant are the lanes thy children walk, and lovely is the memory of their feet amid the wonder flowers of paradise. A heavier tread is mine, a mightier touch. There, where the gods and demons battle in night or wrestle on the borders of the sun, Taught by the sweetness and the pain of life to bear the uneven, strenuous beat that throbs against the edge of some divinest hope, to dare the impossible with these pangs of search. In me, the spirit of immortal love stretches its arms out to embrace mankind. O oh, death, who reasonest, I reason not. Reason that scans and breaks, but cannot build or builds in vain because she doubts her work. I am, I love, I see, I act, I will. Death answered her, one deep surrounding cry. No, also, knowing thou shalt cease to love and cease to will, delivered from thy heart, so shalt thou rest forever and be still, consenting to the impermanence of things. But Savitri replied for man to death. When I have loved forever, I shall know. Love in me knows the truth all changings mask. I know that knowledge is a vast embrace. I know that every being 
is myself. In every heart is hidden the myriad one. As when one walks in sleep through luminous dreams and conscious knows the truth their figures mean. Here, where reality was its own dream, he knew things by their soul and not their shape. As those who have lived long made one in love, need word nor sign for heart's reply to heart, he met and communed without bar of speech with beings unveiled by a material frame. Men seeing thee shall feel my hands of joy, in sorrow's pangs feel steps of the world's delight, their life experience its tumultuous shock in the mutual craving of two opposites. Hearts touched by thy love shall answer to my call. Discover the ancient music of the spheres in the revealing accents of thy voice and nearer draw to me because thou art. Here came the thought that passes beyond thought. Here the still voice which our listening cannot hear, the knowledge by which the knower is the known, the love in which beloved and lover are one. A glorious multiple of one radiant self, answering to joy with joy, to love with love, all there were moving mansions of God bliss, eternal and unique, they lived the one, one who came love and lover and beloved, eternal, built himself a wondrous field and wove the measures of a marvelous dance. In all her acts a strange divinity shone. Into a simplest movement she could bring a oneness with earth's glowing robe of light, a lifting up of common acts by love. All love was hers, and its one heavenly cord bound all to all with her as golden tie. Our hidden centers of celestial force open like flowers to a heavenly atmosphere. Mind pauses, thrilled with the supernal ray, and even this transient body then can feel ideal love and flawless happiness and laughter of the heart's sweetness and delight, freed from the rude and tragic hold of time and beauty and the rhythmic feet of the hours. All our earth starts from mud and ends in sky and love that was once an animal's desire, then a sweet madness in the rapturous heart, an ardent comradeship in the happy mind becomes a wide spiritual yearning space. A lonely soul passions for the alone. 
the heart that loved man thrills to the love of God. A body is his chamber and his shrine. Then is our being rescued from separateness. All is itself. All is new felt in God. A lover, leaning from his cloister's door, gathers the whole world into his single breast. Then shall the business fail of night and death. When unity is won, when strife is lost, and all is known, and all is clasped by love, who would turn back to ignorance and pain? Even now, hints of a luminous truth like stars arise in the mind-mooned splendor of ignorance. Even now, the deathless lover's touch we feel. If the chamber's door is even a little ajar, what then can hinder God from stealing in? Or who forbid his kiss on the sleeping soul? But where is the lover's everlasting yes? And immortality in the secret heart, the voice that chants to the creator fire, the symboled om, the great assenting word, the bridge between the rapture and the calm, the passion and the beauty of the bride, the chamber where the glorious enemies kiss, the smile that saves, the golden peak of things. Love shall bind by thee many gathered hearts. Love in her was wider than the universe. The whole world could take refuge in her single heart. And there is more, so much more. Namaste.